Hello everybody, it's Kate Plays back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how I rebuilt the Guadalajara Rainforest Conservatory Reptile House using blueprints as inspiration. So stick around to see the process and learn how you too can build with blueprints. All right, so we're gonna hop right in here to the Guadalajara Zoo before the rebuild. And we're just gonna take a wall piece and make sure that I have measured out the correct amount of space for the reptile house before we jump over to my other sandbox zoo called Blueprint Building, as you'll see. So this is where I plop down all of the cool blueprints that I find that I like and I take them apart so I enter group edit mode and then I use various different tools like the move tool to pull the items out and you can click on every single item and see what it's titled if it's recolorable what color it is how they placed it such a great tool I know I've seen on Reddit and in other various communities that some people are concerned about using blueprints and feel like it might be cheating. While I don't, I feel like it's using the resources provided to you. I can definitely see how one might feel that way, but if you use them as a learning tool, you can pick them all apart. So even see, even the exhibits. You can select the pieces in group edit mode and move them. Raise them up, lower them down, figure out how they slot them in there. All of these pieces are pieces I really like. This snake itself may look familiar. We are gonna be using that piece in just a little bit. You can recolor items, see if they're recolorable. such a great tool to be able to pick apart. Something like this, such a complicated arch, as you can see, how many pieces went in. This is a Planet Zoo, you know, blueprint. And there's so many pieces that went into this. So you can pick them all apart and figure out how exactly they built these. The staircase can be replicated. You can even see how they stacked it on these slanted walls. So breaking down a blueprint and using it in group edit mode to find out how it was built is a way you can utilize blueprints to learn and maybe not feel like you're cheating. Like that wall piece is pretty cool and you can pull it out or duplicate it when you select just the one and see what you could do with it. It's a great way to learn how to do roofing because I'm terrible at roofing, so just group edit mode and you can select the individual pieces. This allows you to create better roofing. So we're gonna use that to deconstruct some temples, which I've already started on yesterday. And I didn't film the beginning because sometimes I try to play just for fun without filming. And I de deconstructed some of these awesome temples. Look at these intricate buildings, individual pieces here. So I took off some of this temple, like the top, and built 
various different things using the pieces, using the wall piece, I created a wall. Taking off a couple side pieces of the temple, I started to create this building, although I knew I was creating the wrong size. Hence, measuring if you're gonna be placing anything over something. So we're gonna hop into the speed bill and show you how I replicated my measurements. I just went in and plopped down the measurements I took with the wall piece. And it's not perfect. Keep in mind, when using a blueprint, there's gonna be a lot of finagling if you're gonna make it your own. So be ready to do that. It took me quite a bit of time to make it work and I cut out all the ugly for you all. So I move over the corner to make it the length that I want and then I'm gonna start taking away the entrance piece by piece to get the entrance size I want. The entrance isn't perfect, it still needs some work, but that's okay. As you can see, the zoo is a living progress. You'll notice when we hop into the actual zoo itself that there's been quite some work over on the area for the habitat reptiles. Um, not ready to post that video yet, still working on it, finishing up those three habitats that can join or can join, join to the river right there. So that'll be really awesome once I can get that finished and get that video posted. So as with the blueprint, I spend quite a bit of time making sure that everything is lined up as best as possible. I figure with a, with a temple, you know, you might think that not everything is 100% as it, things might have settled, you know, it might not be 100% as it was when it was built. And as you can see by the entrance of Guadalajara Rainforest Conservatory, they found these temple ruins and these animals needed sanctuary, so they created a zoo out of these temple ruins to give these animals sanctuary, so it's not going to be perfect, right? Like, they're temple ruins that they've reconstructed. So here we are inlaying the gold piece again and getting these kind of right, as right as possible. <clears throat> takes a bit of finagling like I said so the best word of advice I have for messing with blueprints is don't like get disappointed like if something doesn't line up like this right away just move it take the time it takes to select all the pieces use the multi select tool if you can if you're selecting others you can hold down control and click on something you want to unselect to make that selection be what you want it to be and just work with it finagle it right just because you're starting with a different piece that was created by planet zoo doesn't mean that you're not creative right i especially love using blueprints when i feel like i am stunted or don't know i've hit like a creative block don't know what i want to create Right, I might feel like I'm stuck or not getting inspiration from the game anymore. So I'll go to some blueprints, stick them into my blueprint building sandbox zoo and mess with them, see how they look. Here I am just editing some of these kind of additional temple pieces they have in the wall to make it look a little bit less repetitive. I'm also not the best at roofing, as explained earlier when looking at the blueprints. I am trying to learn from blueprints. I try to make this roof a little bit more dynamic by adding the bump out that we will see. Kind of can see it over to the side there with the snake on it. Have any of you all tried this method before of morphing a blueprint so to say to your needs because I think it's a really awesome technique. Here I am adding in that archway that's going to be the side of the reptile in amphibian house. I guess it's mostly an amphibian house because we only have the one snake that is the rainforest biome snake in there and that's the boa constrictor I believe. 
and here you see things don't line up again perfectly and I don't even believe in the end they really do but again it's a temple right the ruins that were reconstructed this is a lot nicer than some of the other ruins I hope to find throughout the grounds of the zoo So getting the back wall on, starting to look like the reptile house we have back in Guadalajara. Just more aligned to the entrance temple stone color. My plan is to honestly recolor the sloth house as well to align with this color and then add in lighter stones such as we did around the orangutan and other primate islands to mix in with the tropical rock. This is a little tip to get rid of that flickering. And here we are, this is a piece I took from the top of another temple and then just added that snake to it. I'm actually gonna toss that snake because I don't like it and I'm gonna steal the snake from another blueprint which you'll see in a moment. I also make slight a bit of mistake that I correct in the end by not separating it from a group. You'll see that as well and I'll give you some best pointers for doing that when you're working with blueprints as well. And so I'm making this top go throughout the entire building to give it some dimension, adding in a couple more temple pieces. Here we're gonna correct it so that the temple pieces aren't just the same all across and we have a couple more variety in there. So here I'm mostly just filling in gaps. Most of the building structurally wise is complete based off of what I pulled from other temple pieces. So you see how you can use the temple pieces for inspiration and not have to feel. I pulled that roof from another temple, right? And it's a really nice filler. Looks a little bit more natural than the piece that's up there. On the very top, which I think is cool. We're not gonna add torches, but we are gonna give a little flare to the tops of this bump out on the roof. I feel like the more little pieces you can add in this to give a little bit of dimension to the buildings is how you get a slightly better look. As you'll see, our last reptile house was just pretty much a box. And this one is still pretty much a box, just slightly better. <clears throat> doing some shifting of some items here and adding on some final trim really starting to come together there will be quite a bit of finagling I have to do to make it work on the building I am building it on had I done it right there in the zoo I could have got a better to feel real time, but I wanted to show you all my blueprint building zoo. Now you see I take this out and I actually duplicate it. Right here I should have hit exit on the edit Indonesian gate in the top corner. And since I don't, we'll find when I go to save this is a blueprint. I have a little trouble getting the snakes separated. I do it there, but it's already too late because I placed it. <laughs> So here I am taking the snakes from that blueprint and I'm gonna recolor them to match our stone color. And then I'm actually gonna elongate them by the length of the roof. And it's, it's not too hard, I just duplicate two and then another and then I take the whole thing and duplicate it. I end up having to delete a couple in the end right here, but no big. 
And then what I can do is duplicate the whole front part over. And I have to finagle the tail a little bit to get it like I want on the other side. So I go steal this tail from the other side of the snake. And I'm still editing in a group that I shouldn't be. So had I clicked exit on the Indonesian gate way before I put these on here, I would have saved myself just a little bit of trouble at the end. It, it still works out because I know how to separate them from the group. So we'll break down that part for anybody who doesn't know that as well. Got it colored, doing just a little bit more finagling. <laughs> it's not gonna be perfect. I think it's not meant to be that angle. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to save this as a blueprint. You'll see what I mean, what happens here. I have some pieces that sunk into the ground that I didn't realize I lost. And then now I have that gate over there. My blueprint, I deselect it. Okay, cool. But you'll notice as I move around this, my the snakes are no longer selected either. And I kind of noticed that. I need to get those out of the group as well. And I end up doing it, but kind of do a little bit of extra work right here just trying to figure out how to approach this because I didn't separate those snakes from the original blueprint so if you take something out and duplicate it make sure you exit the group that you're editing when you're placing it and either add it to the group you're trying to work on or add it on and then merge the group whichever way works best for you so now I have to split these snakes from this group so in order to do that, I'm gonna select them and they're gonna select the other items. So now I'm gonna edit the group edit mode and I'm gonna select the snakes that are in there and I'm gonna split them from that selection. So now when I come in and select the full blueprint I've made, I'm gonna to have to go deselect some of those underground pieces again, but it's no longer connected to that original blueprint. So now I can deselect some of these sunken in pieces. They're not gonna matter anyways. And this is where the fun happens. I'm gonna go ahead and save this bad boy as a blueprint by clicking that first button available right there. And new blueprint. Now you'll have to name it. And then you'll give it a description and you do have to give it at least one blueprint tag. I'm bad, I always select other. I figure for organization, you should probably do something better. So do what you should do if you wanna stay organized or do like I do and tag everything as other because it annoys you to figure out what other tag to use. You even have the option to tag species, so lots of options for organization. So we're gonna jump back into Guadalajara Zoo and this is looking boring in comparison. So I'm gonna select it all, deselect the Exhibits and delete. And here we're gonna place the new shell. We've got a lot of work to do, to be quite honest with you. We've got to finagle a bit. Had I done this in this lot, maybe we wouldn't be having this issue, but I didn't for the purpose of showing. And we're just gonna finagle a bit. So enjoy my struggles. Basically, I'm gonna push in and out a couple of walls, make everything fit essentially just right. In the end, I wanna go ahead and build in these exhibits. So I'm gonna bring in some temple pieces like these ones to fill in the black tops and bottoms. And then we are also going to add in the exhibit um, education boards, and then we're going to also add in foliage, 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 words, what are they sometimes? Foliage to the terrariums to make them look a little bit more different. Maybe even try to make the ones that are next to each other look combined. Here you'll see me finagling, like that word, just a little bit more to get this area just right. All the sides kind of look slightly different, I think, in the end due to the finagling, but 
Like I said, it's a temple that was reconstructed in the way that it could be to hold these exhibits. And I don't think it needs to be perfect. We'll do more work on it. Here I bring one of those gold accents inside. I like the way that looks, that area. Might find a way to add a bench or a seating area or implied maybe even there. Here we're gonna fill in some gaps because gaps happen. And you'll see as I just keep making a few more minor detail adjustments here and there, this gets a lot more interesting starts to look a lot more like a completed temple. Soon the next episode of Guadalajara Zoo will be coming as I give you all the speed build for the um, grotto that's happening right over there to the side that you're seeing happen next to the river. There's going to be some underwater viewing area there for the Dariel, the Dwarf Cayman, and the Asian Water Monitor. So there are reptile habitat species, so they're going to be put in right there where those stairs are. And add in some lighter rocks too to go with this temple and the other rock work that's done around the islands, the primate islands. So we pulled the back wall out and we are really getting close to finishing messing with this to make it perfect. Not even perfect. I never feel like my builds are perfect. I'm still learning and growing and doing this for fun. So covering up some places I filled in some gaps that I thought looked good before, but I liked them without the gaps a little bit more later. So yeah. Adding in the side pillars here that really kind of give it a little bit more depth to the side. And bringing over those gap fillers. Sometimes my axis gets off there and I, it's always fun. So some of the gaps were fun to fill, but that's okay, we get it. Starting to really look like a nice reptile house that goes with the entrance and the Temple Ruin Cafe and the areas we already have built. Sloth House, you are next for recoloration. All right, well that's gonna wrap it up pretty much. So don't be afraid to build with blueprints. You totally can and it's not cheating. It ends up looking dang good if you ask me. So let me know what you think of Guadalajara Zoo so far. And thank you so much for joining me in this video and I will see you next time.